Hey, what's going on, my case of this? Back with a brand new video. In this video, I'm gonna be flying out to Miami. I'll be attending a Buddhist retreat. The Buddhist organization is called SGI, Soka Gakkai International. It's the biggest new religion in Japan. This organization practices Nichiren Buddhism, a Japanese branch of Buddhism passed down through the ancient times all the way from Siddhartha Gautama. Nichiren was a man in the 1200s whose existence has made eminent many branches of Buddhist philosophy. This organization came from, I guess you could say, three founding fathers. There's Tsunesaburo Makiguchi. He's the first sensei. There's Josei Toda, the second sensei. And Daisaku Ikeda, the third and uh, only alive sensei. These guys were big activists since the early 20th century, amassing members during the era of World War II. Many Japanese women bringing this Buddhism to America, spreading Buddhism in the West, where East meets West. How my parents met. How I came to be. So we're gonna be with a bunch of people I grew up with due to my predisposition here on Earth. So we're headed to the airport, layover in Toronto and Miami. It is. Well, my case it is, it's been a bit frantic due to me forgetting my American passport. Mama's bringing it right now. And we're gonna board this flight. All right, my quesadillas. Made it across security. Now we're in the LV store. Now I'm finna hit up the Hermes store. And now we're finna pull up to the Bulgari store. I'm the Bulgari Vite. Now we finna hit up the Gucci store. Uh, now we finna hit up the Cartier store. In my case of this, I'm thinking about making videos on reasonably priced pens, starting with this. Only for a hundred thousand yen. I thought it was Shai Masai Kai. I saw this. Not me. Oh, Jenna. Oh, okay. Tadaima. Alright, now it's about time we check out the Saint Laurent store. This is this designer, designer of the store. So, what is it? It's a designer. 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 It's a I lay over in Toronto. It's my first time in Toronto. I don't think I've ever been to Canada. Where the maple leaves at? I don't see no moose. Shabbat's up and hot. But hey, my flight was delayed here. Therefore, I missed my flight to Miami. And so they accommodated me with the hotel for the night and a flight at five tomorrow. So yeah, we're gonna spend a night in Toronto, baby. A Canadian night, my case it is. All right, so we just got on the shuttle. Oh, okay. We're going to the 15th floor in the Hilton Garden in T19. 
My nice table. Ah, nice. Got two beds. If only we had company. Wait for my phone to charge. Um, the dispenser is about to close, so it's too late for that. But um, we can go walk around, get some food, and hopefully find some Canadians to get me high. So I just got some food from the bar. I'm finna just go and go ahead and eat and just edit. I'm gonna be like one of those. I'm gonna be like one of those. I like Canada. So I'm finna just edit, maybe entertain myself a little bit with some media. I will leave this here. I'm gonna get some nice cinematic shots for my quesadillas. Hold on. I really like the act of smoking. But it's just like talking without having to speak.
Huh? Huh? Represent. Yup. Yo. Yo, money. Yo, money. We out here. I was gonna say something. But I'm high as hell. You wanna say something, but you're high as hell. I forgot. I forgot. Amen. So happy to be here. Excited for FNCC. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Yeah, excited. Beautiful day. Exactly. Gorgeous day, man. Yeah, mm. great weather. Yeah, 82 right. degrees oh. outside. Uh-huh. So yes. nice. Yeah, man. Popping off. Hey guys, how's it going? Hey, how's it going? Yo, man. Thank you so much. We out? Yo, man. Hi, fellas. I'm closing the door out for the FCC. Hey, yo, man. Yo, man. Hey, we out you. Hey. How's the flight for you guys? That's uh, pretty cool. That's on good. That's on good. It was a couple days ago, so uh, that's on good. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, so you've been here? Already. Yeah, I've just been hanging out. Oh, nice. That's uh, Do you nice. live here? Yeah, not Miami, but Fort Lauderdale. Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, never paid attention to how close they are. Yeah, it's forty minutes. Not too bad. Yeah, that's basically like a suburb. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> almost literally. of a major city. Mm -hmm. What's your name? Hillary. Hillary. Thank you for driving. Thank you. Yeah. What's your guys' name? I'm Darius. Darius? Okay. Yeah. I'm Kay. I'm what was Kevin. It? Yeah. What Kay. Was Kay. Kay. Okay. And Kevin. Mm -hmm. So and you're Kevin. like, yeah, nice to meet you. Uh, wait, you're Biakuren. I'm you're, what? You're Biakuren, right? Um, so I just, I got my Gohansen. I think maybe two months ago. Oh, wow, okay. Um, Damn. I've been hearing that word. Does that mean... That's like, that's like yeah. the it's woman. It's like behind the scenes support for, oh, for okay. females. And, yeah. then, and then for males, it's gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Hey, Hudson. Yeah. That was, what's like hey, the man. guy version? I forgot that one. It was... Gotcha, Kai. Gotcha, Kai. <laughs> that was some good gotcha, Kai earlier. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I'm good, got your cat. Yeah. Got your cat. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Pedagogy. Y'all be into that pedagogy? What does that word mean? Yeah, I don't even know what it means. I don't know. Yeah. It's like, pedagogy. it's like the, what, uh, um, Jose Toda was mainly preaching, like, 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 like pedagogy, like, like, like teaching the children. Yeah, pedagogy is like curriculum. A pedagogue is a teacher. Oh, for real? So pedagogy is what a pedagogue teaches. Ah, oh, okay. Oh. So y'all be concerned about the education. I mean, education is like literally the natural state of everything. You know, it's like, uh, I remember I was talking to some guy way back. Uh, I, was in, I was in Boston at the time, but he was basically saying that everything is like a little neural network, you know? And like, uh, fundamentally, it's like education is like fundamental to how everything lives, you know? It's like... Even if you don't think it's the case, you know, it's just, it's all the way through. Uh, so, you know, it's kind of important to be focused on education. It's a... Uh, Factual. Factual. It I'll is. Be, I'll be a lifelong learner myself. Yeah. Yeah. Good. yeah. We're in the school of life. School uh -huh. of life, man. Uh -huh. Even if you're not in, like, the normal, like, you know, school, you should be learning something. Factual. That means, like, if you're not, you're just not exposing yourself to anything. Key, key. Not evolving. Yeah, you're not evolving. Great. Y'all... Y'all, y'all are fortune babies? No, no. Well, she got her Gohansen two got months it. ago. Yeah, right, so right. Yeah. And my so, yeah. dad got it once he started working with the company. Oh. Huh. I, uh, I, no, I'm not a fortune baby at all. Neither am I. Yeah. Huh. When did you guys join? August. Uh, August? Oh, August so recently. Now, seven yeah. years ago for me. Oh. Yeah, about seven years ago. Wow. Uh, it's been a while. For you, it was August of this year. Yes. Well, do you remember the date? Sixth. That's lit as hell. That's lit as hell. So do you feel like your life has changed since you started like going all in on it or? For me? Yeah. Yeah. I think internally it's been, um, that's been the biggest change, which I'm glad because I feel like that just kind of trickles out to everything externally. Mm-hmm. Um, I was just dealing with a lot of anxiety and I wasn't in a good place. A lot of external circumstances had me like really down. So once I started, I don't know, my, my mood 
just uh-huh. I think learning about the practice studying and then just the chanting uh, helped a lot with my mindset yeah. how, how, how do y'all feel about the mantra Nam Myoho Renge Kyo it's cool <laughs> how do you feel about it? How do you feel about it? Um, it's just, it's just like, it's interesting. And, and I, I, I ask, I'm curious, I'm curious. You know what I mean? It's interesting. I think, I think it's like a, like what? It's, it's like if you focus it on it enough, it, it becomes like one atom, like just one atom that is like a pinpoint thing in the like focused on like in the whole universe and, and that's and, and that's why like maybe like the more you do it the more the neurons yeah well, you focus it, basically. Yeah. it's like the monad or you start getting into um not me not samsara that's not what it is uh right samsara no, 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 that samsara is like phrase. the normal living i think so there's like the eightfold path or whatever and like the one that everybody like across multiple different religions even though they never really say it like exactly in the terms they all are trying to hit is that eighth path right that's like the path of divinity where you become at one with the universe and you are officially affecting both the past and the future at the exact same time um in all possible wow whoa yeah yeah, yeah. wow Um, but uh (laughs) wow um you hit that no, I mean, it's always it's happening. It's more of just you become aware of it. That's it. Okay, um, what's your age? I'm 23. Mm-hmm. How is y'all's age? How is y'all's age? I'm in my 20s. Y'all, uh, I am 20. 29 myself. You man. are, I'm y'all. Ooh, big How about video. you? How about you? I'm 26. Y'all are okay. all like, or 27. Don't call me old, bro. Y'all are all like <laughs> in your um, Saturn's return. Yeah. In your Wait, Saturn's in return. Now? You know about that? I don't know what the fuck that is. It's like, like when you're 27, that's when Saturn comes back, and to you, you and like, like astrology zodiac. And it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a transformational you know, somebody talk. Somebody told me the other day that <laughs> that's because what it said. of the day that I was born, I'm ruled <laughs> my by barber, the my barber, my barber told Mercury. me that. Hold on. Your barber yeah. sounds like. Yeah, <laughs> He's man, chill as hell. He was nice as hell. He was nice as hell. I don't think that, like. No, I don't fit to me at all. Any yeah. Sort of um, I do think that, like, astrology right. is more like a clock, you know? But, like, it's um, a clock. like clocks. Yeah, so, okay, so where you, if you were to think about what a clock exactly is, when you're, like, looking at, like, the, the gear clock, right? Yeah. You have all these specific gears that are turning that one gigantic oh, head, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or a couple of gigantic heads or whatever. And space um, is that. And so when you're looking at, like, the stars or whatever, what are you looking at? You're looking at planetary movements. You're looking at, like, um, a lot it's of like the that. different, like, gravitational waves and everything else like that. All these things are changing. So, like, they actually move kind of like clockwork, right? And uh-huh. when all you're seeing is really just the projection of stars but like yeah. there's a lot of activity that's happening in the background yeah. so I do think that like periodically things actually will end up playing out certain ways right but I don't think that like it's causal per se it's more of like just like you tell time like like Wait, what do you mean playing out certain ways like um like if we are driving somewhere and at three o'clock or whatever everybody's gonna go pick up their kids <laughs> the traffic will start to pick up, right? But it doesn't mean three o'clock is like the cause of it. It's more of just like, it's the time. Does that make any sense? Uh-huh. Um, yeah. I so think I do that's think- kind of what they're saying. Though. Yeah, you know? Or like what astrology kind of- Yeah, that's basically what it is. Say. It's not a causal thing. It's more of just like, oh, that's the time it is, you know? Yeah. yeah. You know? Um, it's a correlation, but, but it's it not necessarily do... like the cause. Yeah, it's not yeah. the cause. It's a. It's just the correlate. <laughs> it's, it's really, I think it's just a matter of happenstance that things were the way that they were at the time that you were born. I don't think that it was necessarily intended for you to be born at that specific moment in time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean we can look at them as both random and fate, you know, and it kind of, it's both, but um, I do think that astrology thing is time. It's more of like a clock. Um, I've read the Ion by Carl Jung, and it, he basically like lines all these things out for like the last five thousand years, and like a lot of the things that he actually like made a statement for, and made predictions for, actually have been coming out around the times that he said they were coming out, and so like he said, oh, I only really make these predictions based on like kind of like how these astrology things work, but it's like 
just like I said, it's like it's more of like a, a way to tell time. It's like the astrology thing is more of just a way to tell time. It's not, it's not really like the cause of the events themselves. Yeah. The do cause you, is something else. Yeah. Whoa. Mm-hmm. Do y'all think the the are y'all more concerned with the history or like like the science? Like like the physics. You know, I mean, you like I feel like right all, now bro. y'all y'all are talking a little not scientific but like like I don't know you know what I mean like empirical maybe I don't know like something like that but but do y'all think yeah like, I think that I begin like that way too but is it is it is the history like the history like the like the people like like studying I mean, yeah. them like Nietzsche and things like that y'all think that's important like so even oh, back to Siddhartha yeah. um there's a thing that I've been following more recently called Cleodynamics, I think. Um, and Whoa. basically it just means like the science of history. Whoa. Um, so a, a guy goes through and just like how you can look at trees to be able to figure out how like old they are, right? By the rings they have or look at like the settlement of like um, of uh, like rock in order to be able to tell exactly what the composition of the yeah. age were and look at like all the fossils and whatever to to be able to tell like historical events like what species were there um this guy goes through and he looks through all these possible different records and like you know the height of people to figure out their nutrition and um the kinds of events that actually like happen and and whatever and he turns them into like literally mathematical constructs and like any like literally he predicts like the rise and falls of society he he predicts like when certain religions are going to pop up and predicts all that stuff and it's like yeah it's like clockwork actually like we can literally predict like literally to like this like a five-year range of when things are going to happen um and so like it's historical but it also it's scientific dude it's super scientific um yeah. and it's like it's it's weird it's like amazing like, honestly like like the like our biological structure like yeah. like the way like angles the way angles like the x y axis the z axis the way like this like the vertebrae like developed like like how how that 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 I was watching this Netflix thing and like the first fish type thing where it's like a ver- it has a backbone like yeah. like that first developed before that it was like Everything. this interesting like creature it's like and then just like you know the I don't know the dinosaurs you know? yeah, yeah. evolution yeah. is interesting bro it's crazy yeah it's all interesting it's all it's cool interesting. cool shit bro cool shit <laughs> <laughs> um, we yes. all like spawn yeah. I mean actually it's wild everything you ever think that like we're not so different from animals and yet like we do all this really crazy oh, shit? We're about half an hour you know, it's like I think about that all the time. It's like we we have not heavily evolved for like the last like five, ten, no, mm-hmm. hundred about a hundred thousand uh, years. Fifty fifty to hundred thousand years, right? right? Very big range. But we've created like all this technology and everything else like that too. Like that's wild. Like the fact that evolution actually like got to that point is crazy. You know? Um to, to the point where now it's like uh, technology it does all the evolving for us, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. that's wild. <laughs> that's wild because that means that like all the stuff that we're doing was baked into like evolution to begin with. Mm-hmm. Because otherwise, why else, like how else would we be able to do this, you know? Like, it's crazy to think that technology actually might be like inside of the genetic code that we like put in and, nah, and that we have nah, right for real. like the cars that are around us was inside the genetic code and we that's like that's wild when you think about yeah. it you know yeah. um but then that actually makes you kind of wonder or whatever right like what is the universe you know because yeah. you know somebody else could use the perspective like oh look at all the things around us like this was all in somebody somebody's mind you know <laughs> and i just said it was in your genetic code right um uh-huh. It, it means that like some things might actually be baked into the mind of reality, which expresses itself through genetic code, which then expresses itself through the mind again. Oh my goodness. Which then expresses itself through technology again, which, you know, if we look at ChatGPT, could then probably end up expressing itself through some other medium as well. You know? hit that for real. It's wild. Um, Illusion's wild, man. Real. It's crazy. You hit it's that. Scary. You hit that like a tray flip. You mm-hmm. hit that. You hit those statements like a tray flip. Like a tray flip? Nah, I don't know. Yeah. Skateboarding. Nah, I, don't, I don't know skateboarding, dude. Wish I knew some skateboarding. Damn. So, you do gym workouts. You, uh... You got, you got a fight, dude. Nah, wait, wait. How do y'all feel about, like, mentors? 
mentors, yeah. absolutely essential. Yeah. essential. How, how do y'all really feel about gurus? Gurus, um, I think that they're a good yeah. placebo. They're yeah. like a good quick fix. You know, if you want to feel a certain way or you're not feeling the way that you want to feel and you want to kind of figure out how you can change that, gurus are... I mean, I think they're, 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 to me, they're more like, you know, like a, um, like a snake oil salesman, like a charlatan. Yeah, yeah. Osho. Oh, show. Fake martial artists. Oh, show. Yeah, screw no. those guys. <laughs> yeah, those, those are just deceptive people who are trying yeah. to take advantage of the people who are in vulnerable positions. Like, I need help with something and I, I'm, I'm desperate. And so, oh, okay, well, I'll pray. There's, there's a lot of parasites like that. But then also, um, there's some people who have really interesting knowledge about the universe itself. I wouldn't you know, consider those people gurus. I would, like I would say that those are like actual mentors. Like, mm, actual yeah, actual mentors. mentors. So re- really, where's the divider line between gurus and mentors? Because like I've heard of a lot of people that I mean maybe like gurus having, versus having an undeniable stack of evidence that you are who you say you are. Uh, uh, yeah, because yeah, yeah, you, yeah, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. you take you take mentors to yeah. to masters to mentors to senseis to. To, to hold on to gurus to yogis to yoga teachers no, <laughs> you get no, down no. to hoes and yoga pants <laughs> what, uh, what's that I've Where, heard of some really interesting who is the teacher hold on like, so, so <laughs> how I think about it is a mentor is someone who can tell you like a mentor is truly a leader in the sense that they've gone to where they're helping you get through and they're willing to go there with you to lead you through it and yeah. then if you have gurus or people who are like well I'll just tell you what to do and you can pay me so that way I'll tell you to do it oh okay yeah. More of like, yeah, I'm the leader, you follow me. Or, I don't know, they have a more like, it's a bit, I mean, even though they may not show it or some people may not see it, it's a big like egotistical. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, aura, aura to them, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I always feel like, like artists are like, like kind of like that. They just try to like figure out a way to like, let their ego work for them. Yeah. I mean, let their, their inner spirit kind of guide them a little bit. Yeah. It's hard when you're so praised by so many people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, I feel like it's it's hard to keep your ego in check. Yeah, that's why child stars, child yeah. actors and stuff, they like, they crumble. Shia yeah. LaBeouf. Shia LaBeouf. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, it sucks what happened to him, but you know, it is what it is. He did an interview. Have you guys seen it? It was like a really long interview where he was kind of explaining everything. Well, I know that for a long time he was struggling because he had a really poor relationship with his father. Yeah. And what was sort of the point of salvation for him where he was able to like redeem that relationship and salvage something good out of it was when his father became ill and I think he stopped working and doing everything that he normally did to focus on taking care of his father and his dad like you know I don't know too much about him but from what I do know he didn't come from like the like suburban families that a lot of childhood stars came from and so I think as far as you know all things considered he's actually done a really good job for himself like yeah he had some slip ups but the only reason we're like oh yeah he fell apart he's doing so bad like one he's still alive which says a lot because a lot of people in with his circumstance they commit suicide yeah or you know or or they you know they they just absolutely destroy their life yeah and he just you know had some he made some mistakes and there was just a lot of uh, attention brought to that so, like, you know, the media and stuff was able to focus on it. But I don't think he's really any different than, like, a regular person who's not famous. So, it yeah, I, 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 didn't, I didn't see the interview that he did, though, so I, I don't it's, know. It, I, I didn't see the whole thing, but it's really good. It talks um, about, you know, getting sober and just everything. Did, uh, did anybody watch that, that movie he made, Honey Boy? Or, uh, no. I saw I saw Peanut Butter um, Falcon. Peanut Butter Falcon. So uh, okay. Honey Boy is basically so he had that weird relationship with his father, and he was like, "Oh, we're gonna we're gonna make a film where I'm gonna act like I'm my father, and then basically like a younger actor is gonna act like they're me." 
and and so wow. he did that. I wonder movie. how that was for him. He's like That's unpacking all of his childhood. Yeah, trauma. it's like he's, he's unpacking all of his childhood traumas in the form of a movie. It was actually That's pretty good, bad. honestly. Yeah. I don't remember like all the details of it, but like, um, you really felt like uh, That's art right there. that like, it was that's... art, yeah. <laughs> And so he was like reliving it from the perspective of the father in order to kind of get an idea of like what the fuck was he actually thinking when he was putting me through this, wow. you know? Um, which was very interesting, honestly. I actually was having a conversation with an old friend about that just the other day about, you know, because her, her mother um, last year committed suicide. No. Yeah. And her mom was actually a very kind lady, but she had issues and she never dealt with them accordingly and so as a consequence you know it was an effect of that she hurt her daughter very much but her daughter is you know a grown woman an adult has her own children now so you're talking about it you know kind of brought up that it's not easy to humanize your parents especially when you didn't have good parents and uh, for me what, what has helped me is recognizing that everything my parents did it's because that was the best they knew how to do with the tools yes, they understood exactly. how to use yep so for a long time i took it personally like you know they just wanted to take you know think of their self first and all that sort of stuff because they're human beings um but ultimately it's like no like if that was the case like i wouldn't be in the picture like right? my parents one my mother carried me for nine months inside of her body before i came into the world so like that says something you know she had ample time to take me out of the equation if that's actually what she wanted and then beyond that like a, a dear friend of mine when he was 12 his mom just dropped him off at a foster house like went to, to just dropped him off there he hasn't seen her since he's never talked to her since then i mean that's horribly traumatic but you know there's lots of things that could have happened that would have actually validated this I think the same thing a lot of times. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, first. Ultimately, like, it's like, actually, yeah. my parents, they did love me, and they did do the best that they knew how to do. Um, yeah. Sometimes it's awesome. like they're blind. They don't necessarily know exactly what to do, you know? So you're playing with uncertainty, and you're just kind of going like, well, I got to do something, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah. Well, I'll stick with what I know a little That'd bit, awesome. you know? It's intense. I, think, I feel like seeing my... Yeah. Sometimes when I talk to them, and, you know, because they're still always, at least for me, I, there's still stuff, like, that frustrates me, and I'm just like, why are you like that? But seeing them as, like, the kid that they have inside them, because some of them didn't get the chance to, like, fully grow up emotionally. Yeah. So they kind of stayed, like, at a certain age emotionally because they had us, and they had to figure out how, how to survive and how to feed us. So seeing that, like, seeing them like that has helped me a lot. Just being like, you know, you have a, you're also a person. You have a, a kid inside you and, yeah. Kids. Thank you for sharing that, Hillary. That's deep. Yeah. yeah. I like that perspective. It's, it's good. It's nice to think about people like they're just older kids. Yeah. It yeah. does. It, it helps. Yeah. Compassion. Well, not even just compassion. You kind of like can just kind of You're see right, exactly Harry. where they are. You know, yeah. it's like yeah. just insight, intimacy. You know, it's deeper. Depending on you know what masters I find, and hopefully I find one that's like right for me. <laughs> so when you say cognitive, exactly like what parts are we talking about? Like cognitive behavioral therapy. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Like, I know when I think cognitive, I was thinking about like also the. Just, just think about a corpse. Imagine a corpse. Corpse, 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 corpses. Is this a cadaver or what? what yeah. No, man. What I think about corpses the, all the, the time. Cadaver. I think about it all, bro. I'm so glad that we're not like. Well, I, I actually, I, uh, I really like being alive, and I am deeply grateful to yes, have this day to live. I'm grateful as well. Yeah. You know, I'm super grateful. Um, Thanks. Sure. Yes. 
I'm thinking about doing gratitude exercises. I was going to, like, message everybody going, like, what are you grateful for today? And I was just like, uh, you know what? <laughs> Why did you just journal that to yourself? I did journal it to yeah. myself. Um, but then I was like, maybe I should ask some people, too. Um, and I didn't do it. We lit. We lit. Hudson. Hudson. K. K. Who's these? 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 I'm not good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> where do you, uh, where do you live these days? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, shit. Yes! Okay. So you yeah. came from Japan yeah. to be here? Uh-huh. <laughs> All right. Are you serious? Yeah. Where are you going after this? Um, it's my friend's place. Okay. Yeah. Somewhere in the U.S. Uh, okay, okay. Got it, got it. All right, you have a bag? Yeah, there is a bag. Yeah. And there was a black one. I think, oh, I think it's someone. Okay. Yeah. Wait. Oh, uh, hey, we out here. Yes. No, I was me. the one who called you. Shit, yeah. We in a basketball court. Yes. Sorry. Hey. It's like it's like yes, you. It's like yes, you. Hey, we popping out my quesadillas. Yeah, man. Got the water bottle. Yeah, man. We popping out. We got the label. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Hey. Yeah, man.
wanna be YouTube fan with me? Should I, I wait? YouTube should I wait? Should I wave the flag for it? Yeah, yeah. Wave the flag. That'd be sick. Hey, Soka Gakai, represent. Stop the cap. Hey. Hey. Crazy. <laughs> Wally. No. That's wild. Hey. Hey. That's, that's the energy here. we're going to have to bring, I guess, huh? Yep. That's the energy. Oh, yeah. yeah, money. Hey. This is the last. AK the Sensei. That's the third one. That's, that's the third. The third Sensei. Everglades, my quesadillas. By wildlife, aren't you? So we're by the lake here, and it's like a, it's kind of like a spine, you know, this, the lake is kind of like the spine of the campus. get my bags maybe take a nap until dinner time I remember I was fucking with the bed the last time I was uh, this is like the main song 
That's like our theme song. That's our opener. That's the OP. We got a vape, hold on. Hey yo, Broski. Can I hit the vape, bro? Can I hit the vape? Hey, uh. What's your uh, YouTube channel name? Yeah, K. Okay. K, okay, look it up. Okay, YouTube channel name? K E I. K E I. K E I. Yep. Yo, money. What, what's the most like insightful thing you can say right now? Go. Are you recording? Never give up. <laughs> Never, Never give, give up. up. That's what my mom says. Insightful thing? Yeah. Depends inside and to what? Well, what I can say is that we are all from different places right now at this one place where we've come together to... Very empirical. To, to, to explore what lies ahead in our practice and to understand better our mission. And the most amazing thing is the camaraderie, everyone coming together and just getting into it, you know. It's free flowing. For for the moment, getting in her. easy and getting together. <laughs> nah, for Go KEI. We out here. We out here. Yo, money. What what should we say? We should wait. Hold on. We need. I'm wild like Spalding. Huh? Say what? Two bedroom again, all to ourselves. Hey, we lit out your, we lit out your my quesadillas. Yeah, the new members are like way cooler than the old ones. I'm liking the newcomers. For real. I'm just, it's weird. I kind of feel like entitled. I just grew up with it. And like, that's, that's my only tie to this. I'm just out you. But now I'm trying to tie it to you. I was trying to tie it to you. 
But I kind of exhausted that desire. Like, I don't even really care anymore. We out you. I often eat dinner. Let's go. I remember something like So I see I used to last time I came here. I was just, I just, I was just fucking around. I just got high all the time. I skipped all the sessions. So we're going to cooperate. We're going to participate this time. Hey. Show my taste of this. Hey. No, thank you. Thanks so much. Right? Hi. Uh, yeah, get some rice. Gracias. What's up? I'm Dane. Uh, yeah, my family in the Gakkai. Uh, yeah, my mom, uh, her family started practicing in uh, Colorado, her parents, uh, in the 60s. My uh, grandpa's older brother lived in LA with Shakabuku. He was a hippie, but he brought it to everyone in, in, in Denver. Shakabuku to everyone. My family's all been practicing since then. And then on my uh, dad's side, my grandma lived in uh, Tokyo, and she started, she was Shakabuku while working at a bank. And she introduced everyone, her mom, her two sisters, and uh, her future husband, who's my you know, other grandpa, and uh, yeah, who's an American serviceman. And they you know, got married and moved to America. That's the history, man. Hi. You're still living with mom. Okay. So, hi, everyone. My name is Enrique. Brazil, but I'm currently living in Columbus, Ohio. So my family started practicing with my great grandmother. Uh, she started practicing in a very late, like old age, in Brazil. And yeah, like she she started having getting contact with the practice with like other Japanese immigrants in Sao Paulo. And in my, from my mother's side, my grandmaster started practicing because they were very, very poor. And they started to like overcome all the obstacles and financial karma and then. So, and here I am now. Uh, I'm pursuing my PhD here in the United States. So, yeah, I'm very fortunate to have like this uh, family practitioner. Big fitness activity. How's it going? Doing yeah, well, nice to see you. It was like so good. A little history lesson. A little history lesson. We're gonna start whenever. So, uh, my mom. Just Okay. Uh, my name is Chantal Clanton. Uh, I was born into the practice. Um, my mom started practicing a few years before she had me. Um, not sure why, but she did, and ever since she's been uh, putting me through all the meetings, all the all the fortune baby stuff, the usual. Um, and uh, during middle school, I was actually part of the uh, the Soka Gakkai marching band over in Japan. Um, that was probably the peak of my practice. 
until, uh, yeah, basically I just stopped kind of attending everything, stopped doing everything. Um, you know, just typical teenager stuff. Um, and then, and then I went off to college on my own. And somewhere down the line, it just started getting uh, too much for me to handle without the practice. So, yeah, that's uh. So ever since I was 20, I've kind of slowly been coming back, and here I am. I, I'm actually married to a woman in the practice as well, and uh, yeah, it's nice. We keep we keep each other in check, um, keep each other. You know, active and on our toes, but practice has given me a lot. Um, so I do my best to give back and to continue studying, continue supporting. Yeah. Okay. Shin. Shin. Nice to meet you. Some like quesadillas. Yeah, this is Eddie. He's like the he's like the most like familiar face here. For me. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, hey, go ahead and tell them like like your history, like your lineage and how it like relates to the kind of Oh, yeah. It's an interesting story, so yeah. it's all thanks to my mom. I think it's uh, a lot of people has to do with their mom and mom's compassion, but yeah, at a time that I, my relationship with my mom wasn't that great, you know, she got introduced to this practice and yeah, yeah, it was I got involved mostly because of the people. See, like, I don't remember the first, like, much of what they talked about in that first meeting, but um, yeah, I just remember the people are super cool. Just wanted to constantly be with them and stuff, but to learn more about it, a lot of stuff came out of my life, and you know, they were there to help me address it. One of which was really helping fix the relationship I had with my mom. You know, typical kind of tiger mom story. You know, immigrant to America, had to learn the language and the culture, and. Um, struggling with that and I didn't recognize that you know she was doing it all for me so uh, yeah it helped me heal a lot with my mom so uh, yeah that was like 15 years ago so yeah. nice so so it's your mom that was like that brought your family into this yeah, yeah, yeah. she got introduced by a co-worker and uh, yeah kind of pulled us all in it's been history since then Yo, congrats on your marriage, by the way. Oh, thank you. Hey. Yeah, can you play? Yeah. She's she's a member too, right? Yeah. 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 Like How so. does that go? Like, what was that? How does that go? Like, uh, like they're not like too active now. <laughs> yeah. It's really, just kind of me. I think uh, kind of. Have like other priorities in life too. They're spending a lot of time taking care of their parents who are getting older and stuff. So really, just kind of me that's holding down the practice. But it's cool, man. I mean, just appreciate that she even introduced me into all this. So just carry it off for the sake of the family. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks. Appreciate it. Wow. Now it's time for the big occasion. It's time for the chanting. Chant that mantra. That Nam Myoho Renge Kyo? Yo, money.
Okay, it's a coat. But it's a chill coat. I got a roommate actually. Alex. We go way back. I used to go to something like this called SUA. A student division conference. And that was like kids in middle school and high school. That, that went to a campus in California. And uh, yeah, I, got, I went there every year. I went there every year for like seven years. So I got a lot of memories there. And um, yeah, and, 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 and I met Alex there. And, and I've been known Alex for a long time. He ends up being my roommate. Yeah, I just got a good night's sleep though. Feeling good, feeling good. Now I'm about to go eat breakfast and do morning gongyo. I'm gonna hold on to the I'm gonna hold on to the type B. I mean, my case of deals. Alright. See you in a bit. It's like a big party. Eddie kind of wants me to stop recording, but I'm a whistleblower, baby. I'm a whistleblower. I'm a YouTuber. I'm a rancer. I'm a debunker. This is what we do. We don't stop the business. The business don't stop. It's lunchtime, so I'm going to uh, get ready. But I eat some edibles. And then going to the next session. Uh, what's going on, my quesadillas? It's the end of the conference now. I was just enjoying it. Look, I stopped vlogging. I should have showed y'all some of the scenery. Because I'm about to leave now. I'm going to go back to Miami. But um, just want to give y'all one last quick pan. Uh, we're going back. We're back with Taylor. Yep. Are you going to get your Uh huh. <laughs> I hope you enjoy. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Taylor. <laughs> of course. Yep. I'll share my quesadillas in Miami. Motherfucking Miami. Huh. This is. So, I didn't want to end the video right there because I don't want to cause no tension. You see. There may be tension. Because I've been unclear. I've been unclear. This 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 thing is shaking. been unclear I 
I'm probably going to stay unclear. Because... If I get clear with y'all... I'm going to be unclear with all this beauty. I guess I just, I don't, and I don't need to explain myself. Cause that ain't entertaining. Maybe to some sick fucks. I just wanted to make it clear. What I'd be thinking about life. Am I in the gut guy? Am I not? What's going on? Huh? Well, I don't know. I just came back from Okinawa. Let's see. And the first day, I, I went out for a jog. And I boxed. I was boxing, joggling, jog, jog. And I started spitting some jargon. And then I started talking to God. Then I stripped down, butt naked, on the side of the road. I was just I had a breakdown. I was going to run for the police, but by a sliver I didn't. And um, I was just... Uh, I, 
I'm fortunate because I passed the drug test. So, yeah, they let me go. I sang, I, s I went full screamo, two nights in a row on my last nights, I was turnt, real turnt. I don't know if that was needed, but just a funny story. But uh, I don't even know if this needed to, but I thought of some thoughts on life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so. All right. People love organizing. We love classifying. We love labeling. So, we also love numbers. So, I'm gonna give you three classes of people. So, There's a thing, I forgot what it's called. The It started with a D, it was like a number here, I can Dunbar's number between a hundred and two hundred fifty. That's like a tribe. And number one is the people who are. absorbed in that. Their self-image is of a person and a number of that many people. Number two. Number two is um, the size of a, a country. Millions, I don't know. Yeah, maybe, let's say a million. Yeah. And 
find someone who's in peace and in unison in harmony with that many people. Number three is um people who undertake Okay, number three is people who have the self-image of a person with everybody. These are labels, my quesadillas. There's no... You know what I mean? It's just, everyone's different. But, uh, I guess you could say people You know, just to make it easy there, either one, two, three. And so, a religion is like, I guess, Two, you know, but it could also be one. I don't know if it's a small one, if it's like a, I don't know, it could be three. Shit, that's probably why, like, yeah, yeah. All right, whatever. Basically, what I'm saying is I found myself trying to be the entire spectrum. For you. Down to uh, the fourth. The one completely alone. I guess I was just trying to, y'all know what I mean.
I'm putting on the show right now my quesadillas. And I'm happy because I'm finally happy to do it. Instead of trying to like figure it out while I'm pixels. This shit confuses me. I've been doing this since I was 12. And at 18, I decided I'm gonna do this my entire life. I started thinking I don't know, but I'm just changing a lot. I'm genuinely thinking of living here. I always thought I'd go back to America. Be an actor. A superstar. And I don't even know, like, I kind of want to just play the shamisen. I just want to live to 123. Ain't that better? Cause I, it's better for it's better for y'all. It's better for the for the dream. I don't know. I I don't even know. I don't want to live in Okinawa. There's a lot of Chinese people there. I'm part Chinese. There's a lot of Americans there. I'm American. There's a lot of Japanese people there. I'm Japanese. She. Sounds about right. But it also sounds so weird just because I had this, like, it was like, for sure, I'm going to be an actor and I'm going to do Hollywood and shit. I, like, I, I want to be a, I want to be a Marvel superhero. That's, that, that was, the, I was on my bucket list. That was like, the, that was the big thing. But like, just for that, 
just for that. Which isn't even up to me. Oh, you really know. Hey, but I could hear high notes now. My case of this, hold on. Hey, lie. I wake up here and I keep on. Hey, lie. I lose it all. I keep on real high. Ah, I just wanna keep going. I just wanna keep going. But like, uh, I don't know what I mean. My quesadillas, I don't even know. But to be continued. <laughs> she. I'm pretty sure, yeah, I'll, I'll probably keep doing this. Yeah, my, I'll keep doing this my entire life. So, yeah, to be continued. I'm pretty sure, yeah. But I'm, I'm not going to put no meaning in this.
Gee. I'm going to give y'all a real show. How long? Let's do some. I was listening to some Okanami. Which song should we do? Try this. Yo, hey, huh? Oh. I'm just kidding. Oh, that the song. It's just another ordinary day No April rain No flowers bloom No wedding Saturday Within the month of June But what it is something true made up of these three words that I must say to you my quesadillas on I just call to say I love you I just call to say how much I care I just call to say I love you And I mean it from the bottom of my heart No summer high, no warm July no harvest moon to light one time to August night. No autumn breeze, no falling leaves. Not even time for birds to fly to southern skies. No Libra sun. No Halloween No giving thanks to all the Christmas joy you bring But what it is Though all so new 
to fill your heart like no three words could ever do. I just call to say I love you. I just call to say how much I care. I just call to say I love you and I mean it from the bottom of my heart. I just call to say I love you. I just call to say how much I care. I just call to say I love you. And I mean it from the bottom of my heart. Hey. I think I'm putting too much meaning into this once again, my quesadillas. I'm out you. Alright, till next time. Wait a minute. I don't even need to do the outro no more. I got a real job. I got a real job. She. Oh, yeah, actually. Wait, actually. Wait, should I, do I need to tell you? Hold on. <clears throat> okay, I'll, I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> so I want to get an ocarina. I wanted something. I wanted to buy something. But I already got instruments. I got instruments. I should get good. This is level one. Pretty sure it's a shakuchi. I don't even know. Shout out to uh, Takwin. She, I told homeboy I was gonna go move to LA next to. Uh, she, I don't know if that's gonna happen no more. Alright. Hey. But I'm not gonna get an ocarina until I can play. Sadness and Sorrow by ear on her. By Scrape Tone. So. 
to be continued my quesadillas. I feel like I can't even make a dance video no more. Because I'm always dancing. You put me in front of the camera for a dance video, I'm going to just stand there and think that's dancing. I'm going back home to my family. She, <laughs> I think I'm gonna be esoteric. This one's for y'all. Wait, I'm just being self-revealing right now. Maybe getting ahead of myself. Nah, nah. Now that I think about it, now that I'm self revealing it, yeah. I mean, exoteric, that don't sound too good. Oh, yeah. But like I said, with the spectrum earlier it's a spectrum I mean my case it is so I don't, I don't know yeah that ain't that ain't for me to decide life has just been so serendipitous can't eat. I can't eat. Incredibly sandy.